Welcome to the DeFi Standard, and this is Mickey B. Fresh. And today's episode, we got a good one. This is Generational Wealth Part 2. So about a month or so ago, we made a previous video about generational wealth, and it was one of the most watched videos that I've made to date. So I wanted to follow up with this concept of how do we build generational wealth, and how does it affect our I guess some could say cash out plans or end game or ultimate goals here in the long term with digital assets. Because when I first got into the space in 2018, the thought was, okay, XRP, price goes capital appreciates, it shoots to 100 something dollars, you sell along the way, and that's it. And you take your cash and you profit. But recently, especially with DeFi coming along, and now with Flare opening the door for DeFi for XRP, and Spark Tokens and Flare Finance, it has totally obliterated any plans that I personally had in the past. And this is not financial advice, and I'm not a financial advisor, but I think it's something we should all be thinking about at the moment, because it's not the same plan as the times have changed. And I think we need to understand what's coming and being built in front of us. And we see XRP's price now flying. We're up to almost $1.50, and it's going to continuously to gain. But how do we build that actual wealth and utilize that value that we earn from the capital appreciation? Because we're not just speculators sitting here hoping that Ripple starts up utility anymore. That is no longer the game we're in. We are now participants in these new networks like the Flare Network, like Flare Finance's DeFi, like Trustline Credit App with Probity and the Vaults. These are all product financial products that are being built on top of Flare that will allow us to put that wealth that we earn and all that value from XRP's capital appreciation to work to build this long-term wealth. So how do we do that? That's the question. Well, we're going to go back to our nice diagram here that I made about a month and a half ago. So we could change at the bottom here. I show Mint Stablecoin FUSD. This is now RA, okay? So RA is the stablecoin, and Probity is right here where it says collateral and spark-dependent application. That's the Probity vault, all right? So that's just a little change. But let's start up here in the top left where the purple and yellow are. This is where we're going to receive our Spark tokens as airdrops. If you're an XRP holder, you will receive 15% of your allocation from the snapshot from December 12th. Now, once you receive your Spark, well, what can I do with that to earn? So at no risk to your token, you can delegate your FTSO vote. Now, this is a detachable vote that comes with your Spark token and delegate it to a signal provider. That signal provider then provides price feeds to the Flare Time Series Oracle, and they have a certain amount of votes that they vote on for their price feeds. If they fall within the truncated 50%, they earn the reward. Now, that's from the inflation mechanism. So I think it's roughly... 27 million, I believe it is, Spark is coming out per day out of this FTSO rewards. So how much of that 27 million Spark do you want to earn? That's what you're going to be able to from the FTSO. And that's in place of proof of work mining and validator rewards in like proof of stake. So this is your opportunity to take that Spark that you were airdrop free Don't pay so much attention to the prices on exchanges and all the trading and what it's going to come out as. The most important part, if you want to really build your wealth with the Flare Network, is to ignore the noise that happens on the exchanges. Unless you're looking to accumulate more and buy, then you look at exchanges. Otherwise, focus on the on-chain activity with Flare Network. How can you participate? Which means delegating your vote to different signal providers, and you could spread them out in the beginning, and you want to see how you can maximize that yield that you earn, because as you earn more of these Spark tokens, that gives you more votes to delegate, and it's a compounding effect here. Now, you'll also be able to simultaneously stake 
your your spark in the F asset system. Now we don't have too many details of that quite yet, but we know that that's going you're going to be able to do both, and that will allow you to earn the underlying assets of the F assets. So as others mint FXRP, FLTC, F Doge, you'll earn a per, the, a percentage of the percentage that they pay. So we will get more information on that and we'll go more in depth to it in the future. And now we're going to move over to, oh, well, also with Spark, you could also use it in certain DeFi applications. Like, for example, in the Probity Vault, you could use Spark as your collateral to mint RA stable coins. Now, what's going to be really nice about that is you'll continue to be able to delegate your FTSO votes that come with your Spark token. So that's huge right there. So you're going to be able to double up. And this is why Flare Network is going to be superior to all the other networks. It's not just hype. It's not just talk. It's facts. The facts of the design. This is how it's built. It doesn't have to give out rewards to miners, to validators. It gives them to those who participate in the network. And you can earn those simultaneously while using the token because it doesn't need to be used to secure the network. That is the difference. And that's what the market truly doesn't understand yet. That's why the advantage is for us. This is how you build generational wealth because you get in early. You understand how it works and how it operates and how you could take advantage, understanding the details before everyone else does. While they're all hesitant and not sure because they didn't take the time to look in and they were just intellectually lazy. And, you know, that's just how the market is until they get around to understanding it. We have the opportunity to take advantage. And now we're going to move on to FXRP. How do you take your XRP and build wealth with that? So you're going to be able to mint your FXRP with your XRP. You pay a 5% fee initially to bring your assets over to Flare. And now I repeat, trustlessly at no risk. The only risk is trusting the protocol. You're not trusting the agent. You're not trusting anything like that. You're trusting the protocol. That's where this all lies in because the Flare Network digests all the data from the XRP ledger. So your XRP will always be there to be redeemed when you want it to. Even if that agent disappeared with the XRP, another agent will provide it because they'll take over their position and their collateral. So all FXRP that is minted on the Flare Network needs two and a half times its value in Spark put up as collateral but you do not put the collateral up. And I've seen a lot of confusion in the community on this. If you're minting FXRP, you do not and cannot put up the collateral. You don't have to be aware of that at all. It has nothing to do with the minting process. The agents or those who delegate to the agents put up the spark as collateral. And then they earn that percentage fee that you pay. So you bring over, let's say you brought over a thousand XRP, you'll have 950 XRP. So you pay the 5% fee and you bring over your assets. So now you'll have daily rewards paid to you in Spark for just bringing over that FXRP. Now, this is where the huge wealth will be generated. Those who see this and realize how much you can earn just by bringing over your assets. Now, you maintain your FXRP. It's completely trustless. This is more trustless than any wrapped Bitcoin. Now, I know everyone's asking, well, how do I exactly do that? What's the process? Where's the tutorial? Well, there is no tutorial yet because we don't know exactly how because the wallets and those details have not been disclosed. Once they are disclosed, I will cover it. But please, we have to follow and go along with the information that has been provided. So we can't do a step-by-step -step exactly what to do yet until we see the integration of the Flare Wallet app and how that's going to work with, say, Nano Ledgers and other wallet apps. But for now, we need to understand what it entails. You're going to bring over FX, your XRP to Flare. turns into FXRP. You pay a small fee. And now you earn daily spark coming out of a rewards pool that's going to have over 20 billion spark in it. 
And this is like a mini escrow. Think of this like an escrow that's getting released out to those who mint F assets. Now, F Doge, F F XLM will also earn out of these rewards pool. And it will be the dollar value of your F assets that determine how much spark you earn from that. Now, there'll be a percentage released every day. It, I think it's going to be, they didn't say yet, 0.1%. 0.2% out of this rewards pool that's going to contain 20 to 30 billion spark. And now this is not in addition to the supply. This is included in that 100 billion supply. Where do these spark come from? They come from the spark that didn't go to Ripple, that didn't go to the whales, that didn't go to the scam accounts. Also 5 billion donated from the foundation and all unclaimed spark by June 11th is the last day you could claim your spark, anything not claimed by then, will go into the rewards pool. They will not be burned. That is no longer what's being done. They are going into this rewards pool to reward everyone who mints the F assets. So just for bringing your, your XRP onto Flare, you're going to get daily airdrops and spark. Every day, daily airdrops. And you'll be able to utilize this FXRP simultaneously in certain... DeFi applications and other applications like the Probity Vault. You'll be able to put your FXRP in as collateral, mint the stablecoin, and still continue to earn those daily spark into your Flare wallet. Now that's huge. So you can't do that on any other network. You're going to be able to earn simultaneously while utilizing the asset in an application. This is why there's such wealth to be accumulated because you're, you're able to build up multiple um, earning streams here. And you'll also have a FTSO vote that comes with your FXRP. Now, you could delegate that to a signal provider, but you do not earn rewards for that. But they could compensate you for it because it gives them additional voting power in the FTSO. So that's something that would also allow you to earn. So technically, you could earn three ways simultaneously. But I'm, you know, I don't know what they would pay you for that. It just could be compensated. It could be and NFT, it could be Spark, it could be XRP, it could be T-shirts. We don't know, but it, it's not set in stone. It's up to the signal provider. And now down here, where it shows Mint the Stablecoin, this is where I was talking about the Probity Vault. So this red down here is where you would put in FXRP into the Probity Vault, and you would mint RA, which is FUSD, which we called it because they're going based on the blog from the Flare Network that was written, closing the circle of interoperability. And then that asset, RA, comes over to the XRP ledger, which would make it the second trustless, counterpartyless, decentralized asset aside from XRP. And I think that's going to play a huge role in the future of the Trustline Credit app and the whole XRP ledger ecosystem. So you see how these are two are connected, Flare and XRP ledger. They really are connected at the hip in a way. So this is why I see Flare more as the sister protocol to XRP Ledger because they directly work together and they're built and designed to coordinate because this Flare is the decentralized Oracle system. It provides all these price feeds. That's how it's able to airdrop exactly a certain amount of spark to you every day for minting FXRP. It'll be able to calculate how much dollar value of FXRP you have compared to the other F assets that are out there. It could calculate all this in real time in a decentralized manner that the smart contracts could just interact with easily. And that's something that other networks can't do. And now remember, these are all going to be Ethereum-based smart contracts. And now Spark is going to have to be used as collateral for all these F assets getting minted. So it's going to have a drive this demand for Spark and this utility in a way that will drive the price of Spark higher because it's being used as collateral. It's pulling it off all these exchanges. And also people are like, when they realize the market, like, hey, if I own Spark, I'm going to be able to delegate votes for it and earn more Spark at no risk. It's going to drive more people in. So the value of Spark in the medium to long term is going to just shoot higher. So you want to accumulate as much spark as possible early on. And that's the key. And this is how you do it by minting FXRP. 
by delegating your FTSO votes. Because all that FXRP that you bring over is still trustless. You could hold on to it or you could utilize it in all these new applications. And you build these different revenue streams up. You build up earning interest in the probity vault from loaning out the RA stable coin. Plus you're earning spark from that FXRP that's just sitting there. And as you earn that spark, that gives you more votes to delegate. Therefore, you earn more spark and more spark. So you don't want to get too caught up in what the price is going to be the first day or two when it launches, unless you're looking to buy more. Ignore that. That's all noise. It's a distraction. You want to focus on how you could accumulate as much spark as you can without taking a dollar out of your pocket to invest. There's no, no need to actually, unless you want to accumulate more with fiat, you don't have to. It, you could just accumulate with what you have using your FXRP or using the spark you have. All right. So that pretty much covers, you know, an overview of this one more time to refresh. But I also have some good clips here. I got from a guy from traditional markets named Jim Bianco, and he really breaks it down with what DeFi is, what DeFi means and what its impact in the future is going to have. Because we have a lot of this talk right now between the great reset and all the plans, the monetary system and the inflation. But then we have the tsunami of DeFi coming. So there's nothing planned out. Like that's my belief here. It's not financial advice, but there's no set plan where this is going because central banks, traditional markets cannot see what DeFi's impact is going to be. That collision course is happening and nobody can predict exactly or lay out, well, this is how it's going to be. No, it's just going to happen. So we need to take all the factors of what's going on here with DeFi and how basically this is the new financial system. It's not being built by central banks. It's being built from the grassroots. That's where it's coming from. And it's going to collide with the traditional market. Now, what is the outcome from that collision that is inevitably happening? Because the third world is going to get in DeFi and there's absolutely nothing going to stop it. It's just going to come and come. And like as Jim Bianco says, it's going to be rammed right into the face of the U.S., and the traditional markets, because it allows yield and alpha yield. That's something that is starting to dry up in these traditional markets. Soon these forward thinking hedge funds, these fintechs, these payment providers, these tech, big tech companies are going to jump into DeFi and crypto, but not just up and down with Bitcoin. That's not what this is. Now we're building financial products. This is the foundation for the new financial system. And you don't build that on something like Ethereum, where you have crazy gas fees, and then you want to rip out the foundation and put a new foundation in while the house stays still, is not going to be a smooth transition. So I'm just saying it's ETH 2.0 has a lot of work to do, and there's no guarantees for success. So I think it is a good plan, and I think it's good for the industry, but it's not something that's guaranteed where Flare Network is building from the beginning a foundation that is superior to even ETH 2.0. And it's going to be there this year in two months. Not in two years, three years. This year. So let's move on here to a clip from Jim Bianco. And this one really resonates with me. Well, we'll go to this one first. I saw DeFi. I was like, ah, here's what you can do with this blockchain technology. It's not some, you know, IBM commercial where they talk about tracking fresh vegetables. I'm like, really? They put together DeFi and that's the best you could come up with is to track fresh, fresh vegetables. That it's something a little bit bigger than that. And that's why when I saw it, I was like, they're creating a whole new financial system. And, there's, and the current trading and everything else is stress testing that system so that it will be ready for prime time when you start to introduce it to the real economy. So he says it right there pretty well. I know Miguel Viaz, I think in the past, talked about the fresh flowers. Like you, that, that's the focus on some of these big companies like IBM, focusing just on tracking fresh flowers. Meanwhile, the potential here is is the DeFi is literally the next generation financial system because it's replacing the financial products that already exists. Lending, borrowing, yield farming. These are new but also old products just getting put on the blockchain. As we get tokenized assets like with Sologenic coming, 
those could be used as collateral. Bonds issued onto the Flare network and other protocols. We have native security tokens issued, like private equity. Now those will get integrated into the DeFi protocols too. And you'll be able to use those as collateral because now it allows this transparency to see if that collateral exists. It's just a superior system than to what traditional markets have. And that's one of the reasons for the financial crisis in 2008. So now let's go over to this other clip where he really breaks down well one thing I think that resonates with uh, those who are XRP holders, where you're now currently, for the most part, locked out of buying XRP, and DeFi is a little difficult to get to. And we know on Ethereum right now, the gas fees are so high, unless you're playing with tens of thousands of dollars, you're just going to get eaten up in gas fees. So this is what keeps out the third world countries at the moment. But as soon as it becomes cost efficient and robust in its ability to be resilient over time, but cheap. These third world countries, everybody has a phone. That's all they need. And he says it perfectly here. They have the tool already. So let's listen. I think that the current set of regulations is doing the U.S. a tremendous disservice. Mm. I can't trade Binance Coin on my Coinbase account. Uh, I can't trade Ripple. If you're in the United States and you're in, in New York, you can't trade Tether anymore. There's a bunch of AML, anti-money laundering, and KYC, know your customer rules, that basically block you out. And what I've tried to tell people is what you need to understand about this new DeFi system is it will start in the third world, and it will grow from there in the second world, third world, and then it will come here and completely flatten you because you are not allowed to play in this, in this sandbox. And you are not allowed to go there in a lot of different ways because we've got all these regulations to protect you, but we're shutting you out. So it's just going to come from the rest of the world imposing it on us. Mm -hmm. And that's why you know, we're not, we, the United States, I don't see us in any way being the leader in this. Oh, I, think, I think we are going to, it's going to be rammed down our throat is what it's going to be. And part of the reason is, as its traditional finance guy, I'll come back to, I know traditional financial people that have accounts on Coinbase. And they just think that that speculating up and down on the price of Bitcoin, that's it. Or right, maybe I'll get fancy and do it on Ethereum too. Have you opened the MetaMask wallet? Have you looked at some of these, uh, what's MetaMask? So he really says it in a way that I, th I think he's right on with this. The U.S. is not going to be a leader in DeFi and a leader in crypto. We already know that. We don't even need to debate that. But the question is, how hard do they dig in their feet and say, we're not letting this come. We need to go through the same centralized, regulated entities where DeFi, you know, is outside the scope. My thing here is to add to what he said is that as we get more fiat on-ramps, like say Trustline Credit Network, we'll have a fiat on-ramp. Remember, the XRP ledger has this built-in design called gateways that are designed for institutions to plug into it and on the back end, connect their accounting systems with the XRP ledger's accounting systems and then issue hosted wallets to their customers to interact on the ledger and build applications, use applications, all these different things. This is what the XRP ledger is built for. Now, PayString, I think, is a key here because it allows the accounts. Now, you'll have your PayString could be attached to your identity because then we'll be able to do actual credit on the blockchain. And I think that's where we're going to see another push away from credit cards into more credit-based online and blockchain based systems and that's what trust line credit network is trying to build on the xrp ledger it has these trust lines built into it that allow to extend credit these institutions could then extend credit to certain entities that are their customers and they could use that credit then in DeFi and other products because we can't just use collateral for everything so at some point credit needs to be extended to retail and institutional and we, to do that, we need identity and name addressing. And now PayString allows the name addressing in a way that obscures the identity, but can still verify it. So self-sovereign digital identity 
is coming. The standards are there. We got to get away from this whole everyone thinks like biometrics and chips are going in their arm. No, no, that's not happening. What is happening is standards are coming for self-sovereign digital identities, self-sovereign verifiable credentials that can happen in decentralized ways. These are W3C standards that exist now. Hyperledger Ares is based on that. Global ID. Pastring itself is five different standards. By the IETF, these are standards for name addressing, and they'll work with intera interoperable with other name addressing protocols. And this is where we could see conforming to KYC and AML throughout the DeFi, because innovation will just find a way. And that's what we have to understand here with this common great reset and whatever Brent Woods moment. That's all fine and great, but that's not the full plan. I don't even if they say this is what it is. There's still this storm of crypto, DeFi, blockchain, all heading its way. So it's going to collide. And now what is the outcome of that world in the next few years? So we have to take both and look at them and say, well, where is this going to go? And we can't look all to just the new Bretton, one, Wood, Bretton Woods moment and be like, oh, that's it. That's what they're going to do. That's the big plan. Well, what, it's a little surprise for them. They got to see that this innovation wave of DeFi is coming. You're not going to crush it. You're not going to destroy it. It's here. It's already genies out the bottle. It's coming. It's how does it integrate with the new system? And I think he hits the nail on the head here with the third world. So let's play one more clip from him. Okay, so here's the other clip with Jim Bianco. And then that's, so when you bring to them a decentralized system that says, we just need to text money back and forth to each other, uh, they're ready. I've heard it from Americans. Oh, this will never work in the third world because in the third world, everything is bribery and corruption and you need like hard physical currency to bribe the border guard. Like, really? Have you noticed that they're all sending money to each other on their phones now? Mm -hmm. They're doing it now. So to just port them over from sending Kenyan shillings or American dollars to some other form of a token is not going to be the big stretch right. that everybody thinks it's going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, they're there. You know, you, the, the infrastructure is waiting for the token as opposed to let's build the token and then we've got to build out the infrastructure around it. In a lot of places, you know, in the third world and in the Middle East, they're already doing it. So they're ready. And if that becomes the de facto standard for two billion people in the world, then the U.S. is going to be at a competitive disadvantage because the de facto standard right now for those people is the U.S. dollar. Mm -hmm. And then the U.S. dollar starts to lose its reserve currency status to whatever DeFi protocol or whatever stable coin seems to supplant it as we move forward from here. That's so I thought that was really well said by him and how he explains the third world as being the catalyst for driving the DeFi adoption. And I think we haven't seen that yet fully because it's too expensive and the gas fees are just crippling to third world countries on Ethereum. But once we have more networks like Binance Smart Chain now starting to make headways, look at BNB token exploding well over $500. That's where Spark is going to follow. BNB is a good indicator to see where Spark could go because it's showing its utility and demand from that. Spark, I think, will exceed the heights of what BNB is doing because it's building such a better network. Granted, Binance has their centralized exchange deep in with everything they're building. But Flare is going to have the same EVM, same smart contracts, more decentralized, lower gas fees, and the connection with all these other crypto asset networks. So Bitcoin, Litecoin, XLM, XRP, that value is just going to unload on the Flare network because they're incentivizing you to bring over your assets by paying this super high yield. And in the beginning, it's going to be high, but it's not just paying just you just to collect free money. It's there because it's going to unlock all this value in these other applications, and it supports the ecosystem. Now, with the inflation mechanism, which is the FTSO, which Flare Time Series Oracle, that is 10% of 10 billion. 
So that's 833 million spark every month for the first six months will be distributed to those who delegate their votes. This is in addition to the rewards pool for the F assets. So we have two ways to earn yield at no risk to our XRP and to our spark. And they're just a positive feedback loop keep flowing into each other. This is how we build the wealth early. But you might not see Spark's price shoot up so much in the beginning. You want to accumulate as much Spark as you can without investing any dollars. That's the key here. And now we have Flare Finance on top of all this. Now you could get a little more risky with certain assets. That's dependent. Then you could take those rewards and use those in the Flare X liquidity pools, be a liquidity provider, and then use those LP tokens to farm YFIN on Flare Farm. The beta is going on right now. Uh, there was a little congestion issues. So I just want to let everyone know, this is just a test net on Ethereum, using Ethereum. Costin 2 is just a test net. It's not the Flare network. It's just all pre. So this is all just test net stuff. They're getting ready. So if once the Flare network is actually out there, you won't have these types of issues. But this is what you have to go through with beta and testing to get through everything and make sure it's resilient and robust that when the actual Flare network goes live, these applications will be, be working properly. And that's why we have beta. And there will be more. Now there's a test net up for probity and the trust line credit network. So you could test out how to put your FXRP in the vault and mint RA stable coins. So we're going to cover this and go through it more as we go through the test nets ourselves here at the DeFi standard. And we are participating in the Flare Finance beta. And we're also participating in the probity vault and trust line credit network test net. So we'll also be diving into that in our Zoom calls on Patreon. We have a spreadsheet that Patty XRP has designed that really lays out the specifics of how you can look to earn yield and where best to position your assets once they're on flare and what to expect. So we broke it down much further than even that I described today. So if you're looking for further information on how to accumulate your wealth and what type of yields you're looking for or to to realize, come to the Mickey B. Fresh Patreon because we have a whole Telegram group where we go through all of this and we also have the Zoom calls which are going to be on a weekly basis come May. And also check out the DeFiStandard.com. That is our website. And Patty just wrote up a great blog on there about the F assets and the APY cloud. So that is a great resource that's just free that anyone could go to. There's a bunch of voice notes I did that are on there. There's also a bunch of videos and blogs that Patty has wrote. So I am not a financial advisor, but I am Mickey B. Fresh, and I'm out.